Welcome to today's video. We got something special we're going to be talking about today. We're going to get down and dirty and get down to the naked facts on motorcycle rallies. So stay tuned because we're going to need your input at the end for what you think we're right or wrong. Stay tuned and find out. So you're probably wondering what the heck are we going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about what's going on with these motorcycle rallies. You know, we're going to talk all about this year, 2023. Right now, Myrtle Beach just just finished up, wrapped up. Everybody's moving on over to Daytona for Biketoberfest. That's the next one that's coming up. So let's talk a little bit about that and what's going on. If you were there, let us know if we got it on, hit it on the nail or not today. <laughs> After talking to a lot of the bar owners, some of the bands that were playing there, some of the vendors that were going on, it was a very, very low crowd there this year. Not many people. Yep, uh, not a lot going on, nothing was really packed. You know, some of the people said the only thing that was really going on was the concerts that were going on. So we're gonna step back now and we're gonna go all the way back to Daytona in 2023 and we're gonna talk a little bit about that one. So starting to talk off about Daytona, the first thing they did is, what did they tell us about the numbers this year? No numbers. Yeah, so that's really shocking because every year Daytona has always came out with the spring rally. They always posted those numbers. So that was the first clue that we had this year that, hey, something's up this year. Let's go see what else is going on. So after we started traveling around Daytona there and checking out all the things, you know, of course, Main Street's always crowded and a lot of the concerts and stuff have people there. On the weekends. That's right. So when you start looking at it, it ended up being, you know, it starts one weekend and it's over the next weekend on Saturday. But what we noticed this year in Daytona was by the time we got to, you know, Thursday before the rally, it was packed lots of people destination daytona said they couldn't sell beer because they forgot to get a lot they didn't get a license for the pre pre rally not for thursday and they said the place was packed you couldn't hardly even walk around the vendors did a great day that day you know friday was good saturday was good sunday kind of mellowed out and then come monday tuesday wednesday it was like a freaking ghost town everywhere. You could walk around and there was like, maybe you'd see 50 people at a time in a group, but I mean, it wasn't any big, large crowds. And here it came again on Thursday and Friday. Here came another big group of people. So actually, I think the first weekend was the busiest weekend, but then, you know, the second one. So what happened to the middle of the week? That's one of our questions. Another reason Daytona could have been a little slow because the Northeast area this year had a very mild winter. So a lot of people thought, Hey, it's not bad. We don't have to go down to Daytona and get warmed up like they usually do. They're usually tired of the snow, tired of the cold. They want to go someplace where it's warm. They didn't really have to do that this year. So some of the other things we have to think about when we're starting to look at these rallies is just like now, just looking at Myrtle Beach that just ended up there for the fall rally and all the rallies that we've gone to. You know, talking about Leesburg. Leesburg, we ended up with a bunch of rain. And I, and I kind of blame that on the, the national broadcasting and all that stuff telling everybody, oh, it's going to rain the whole time. And really, it wasn't that bad. It we wasn't had, a washout, no. You know, we had a little bit of spotty rain, but it wasn't the end of the rally. It was some really great weather. We had some great fun. And so it, that was... Don't always listen to what the weather is it's going to tell you out there. You know, the next thing we did, we went over to Panama City. You know, one of the things that we see that's happening right now is the influxion. I guess that's the word, isn't it? Influxion of cars. Yes. And people that are coming in cars that don't even own motorcycles. For instance, in Sturgis now, they're actually keeping track of that, doing surveys. And, you know, a rough estimate, they're predicting about 20% increase now coming to motorcycle rallies that people that don't own motorcycles at all have no intentions of ever owning a motorcycle. They just want to see what's Sturgis is all about. So that's all the bad thing about when you start looking at big concerts that they have down in, you know, Panama City has them, you know, uh, over in Ocean City, they have them over there. Sturgis has some of the big names come in at the Buffalo Chip. So that's some of the things you got to think about is that's bringing those people in too, which actually gives us more congestion for the motorcycle events. A minute ago, I was talking about some of the statistics. 20% more cars are coming to rallies. But some of the other statistics you need to think about is... When you start looking at the age groups now, about almost 75% of the rally goers are over the age of 50 years old. One of the other things that we did some checking on, it looks like about 23% more trikes are being bought now today than they were in the previous years. So, you know, a lot of people are getting older, they go jump into a trike or they're doing a Can-Am or whatever they might be doing or maybe not even going to rallies anymore. Mm -hmm. So that's some of the things you got to think about. What's happening to the industry that we have going on with motorcycles? Is rallies going to continue? You know, this year it's especially bad because, you know, look at the price of gas. When we first started doing this in 2020, we were paying $1.82 for diesel gas. Today, now, like I say, we're in California. 
but it's about 650 a gallon here and over in Arizona it was 509 when we left a couple weeks ago so I don't know what it is when we get home how high that is and depending on where you live so we're starting to think about going to these rallies now you know heck look how expensive it is just to go to the store and spend you know money for groceries and stuff now that's really high gas is high you know utility Logic. bills everything's grazing and prices and then when you go to these rallies now so many of these places are really jacking up the price even a campground no matter if you're going to Sturgis if you're going to Daytona or you're going to Myrtle Beach you're still going to spend about fifteen hundred dollars for some hookups for an RV some of them don't, don't even include the sewer for that price yeah. not counting what hotel rooms are running anywhere from 150 if you can find one for that as much as four hundred dollars and some of them down there in Sturgis are a thousand dollars a night on Main Street so where's so where is this all going to what are we all after today we're trying to tell you what do we think what's going to happen to motorcycle rallies in the future will next year be different what will it take for things to happen you know the younger group is not riding the bikes like the older people were riding you know i started riding when i was 14 years old i had my first motorcycle I had mini bikes and stuff before that and so we've been riding motorcycles for a long time we've been going to sturgis for what you said over 15 years Almost we've been going years, yeah. going to Sturgis now and we've gone to the rallies that we had in our nearby area we used to go to the Laughlin River Run uh, that's probably close to 25 years we were going to Laughlin every year so we've been to motorcycle rallies we've seen them and we've seen them change you know so many of the motorcycle rallies are getting to where they're starting to be more of a like a flea market they're selling the bracelets and massage guns and recliners and mattresses for your house and it's like who's gonna buy that as a motorcycle person oh so they say oh they have free shipping I didn't come to a motorcycle rally to be pricing out mattresses, mattresses. <laughs> or a recliner. You know, I'm looking for stuff for my motorcycle. You know, and somebody else came up today and wrote on a comment today that, you know, more and more of these motorcycle rallies, especially like Myrtle Beach, you know, it's the same old, same old vendors, nobody knew. Oh, if I'm coming with my motorcycle, I'm looking to get something done on my bike. Now, next year we may be looking for some new slip-ons because I'll, that's a whole other story we'll talk about my slip-ons that I got on my bike. but. I, I might not, I might, this year I want to look at the vendors coming up and I might want to get some new pipes for my bike and things like that to where last year I wasn't looking for that. You know, we got some digital gauges one year, we got uh, the bike tuned one year, had some motor work done another year, had a, you know, every year is going to be different. Maybe they're the same vendors there, but if you own a motorcycle and you're looking to have things done at a rally, you're going to want some of the same old vendors to be there because I want somebody that's going to stand behind their product too. Somebody reliable, somebody maybe that's done work for you before that you know that you liked and then you know that you can count on them. So here's what we want to, this is our question to you today. Are you going to, did you go to any rallies this year in 2023? And which ones did you go to? You let us know down here in the comments. What did you think about the crowds? Do you think it's getting smaller and smaller? Why do you think it's getting to be a less crowd that's coming to the rallies? You know, is it, you know, things have always been expensive. Even if you came 20 years ago to Sturgis, people make more money now today than they did before, most people do. But when you start looking at all this stuff and if you're working for something, just like us, when we first started going to Sturgis, we rode the bike up there and we made it a two week, our vacation. We took our full two week vacation. So that was kind of our plan. You know, we had to stay at hotels and stuff. So if you're traveling to Sturgis, it's not how much money I need to have in Sturgis. How much is it going to take me to get there? You know, your gas, your, your motorcycle ain't getting no 100 miles a gallon. So if you're lucky, you're probably getting 30 or 40 miles a gallon. 40 if you're very lucky. So that's our point today. Let us know down here in the comments what you think. Are you planning on doing a rally in 2024? What's your budget for that? What are you thinking you're going to be spending? And we're going to come up with a video here real soon, and we're going to give you an insight of what it cost us to travel to a rally. So what it cost us last year to go from Arizona to Daytona, pulling the trailer. Now we're pulling the trailer now. And kind of what we spent for food. Uh, uh, what the campground would have cost us because we stayed there a few years ago we know what the going rate is there during the rally we paid about 15 almost 1600 dollars uh two years ago there so we know what the going rate is so you know let us know what you've got in your budget and what it costs you to go to your rallies that you go to and give us a good idea and let other people know and the last thing i want to know is are you continuing to go to rallies that are farther out so that we're going to leave you right here we're actually right now in newport beach yep and right here behind us is the ocean in Pacific. We kind of came out here for to watch the kids and the grandkids and all that kind of stuff. So we're going to be heading home this weekend. So we just wanted to kind of give you this video because I kind of been thinking about this about, I think my personal opinion is I don't think we're going to, have, we got that many more years of great rallies to come. I think we're a dying breed. The younger generation isn't interested. Just like I tell people now, I don't know how long we're going to do this. I'm still gung ho to go to the 85th Sturgis rally. So that we're going to leave you right here. 
Thanks for coming along today. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let us know what you think about what we just talked about. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Share us with your family and friends. Give us a big thumbs up. Ring that bell for notifications, and we'll see you on the next video. There you go.